Hello everyone, it's Sri from Rebel Technology and I'm back with another Gen tutorial. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look into the new MIDI function that is implemented in the latest OWL update. So with this update you can actually send MIDI sequence and also the MIDI CC message to control the OWL devices. So we're going to use Lich as an example and we're going to build monophonic synth voice with two VCOs, VCF and a VCA. So what you see on the screen is our new Lich Gen template. So on the max level, uh, we made it so it looks a bit like Lich. So you have your knob A to D, your two LED buttons, and then the master fader, as well as the couple of number and the scope objects so you can check what's going on if you need it and on the right half of the patch you have your midi section with midi inputs keyboards and knobs for extra cc control and then we have the reference page link so when you click on it it actually opens the reference page on our website which have a very detailed information about midi okay so let's open up the gem patch and see what's inside. Okay, so as you may notice, there's much more param objects in this new template. As you can see, we have the classic param A to D on the top left, as well as your audio inputs and outputs. And then we have array of new inputs and outputs that came with the OWL version two. So two params in the middle, those are for your LED push buttons, A and B, or we can say gate in one and two. So for Lich, you can have up to three outputs, two outs for CV, and then one out for gate. So in case you wanna just use one CV out and then the gate, you can always get rid of CV out two and then assign the out four to gate out but you will always have to follow this rule of CV first and then the gate last. And then on the right top corner, MIDI note related params, including FREC, gain, and then gate. One thing to note about these params is you won't be dealing with the MIDI number, but instead you will be dealing with the converted numbers. Those gain and gates will output the value between zero and one based on the velocity and note on off, as well as param frec will output the frequency. And then below that, we have extra params named AA to AD. And these are for the MIDI CC inputs. And at the moment, we only have four params, but you can assign up to 32 different CC messages. And again, a little note regarding these params, the output will be normalized, which means instead of giving you the value between zero to one to seven, you will get the value between zero to one. Okay, so without further ado, let's build a MIDI compatible monophonic synth voice utilizing all the new params. So what we want to achieve in this synth voice will be two oscillators, square and triangle, and for the square, I want to control the pulse width modulation. I want to detune the triangle wave 
as well as changing the duty cycle of the triangle. And then I want to have a low pass VCF with the resonance, as well as a MIDI controlled amplifier with simple attack and release control that can be controlled via MIDI CC. Lastly, I want to route the envelope generated for the amplifier to the CV out, as well as the MIDI gate to the gate out. Okay, so first things first, we have to make a lot of space. So let's move things around a bit. So let's unlock the patch and grab those outputs and push it all the way down. And then since we are not using any audio input, so we can delete those connections like that and then push these audio inputs all the way up to the top so it gets out of the way and then grab everything and push it down and let's grab those output as well and bring it all the way down to the bottom so we have a plenty of space to work with okay so first thing that we wanted to add will be this object called train and uh, let's quickly open the help and it says train generates a pulse signal, which means it's a pulse of square wave going from zero to one. So let's check all the inlets. And the first inlet would say, okay, so that's period bracket samples, which means it expects the frequency in samples. So we have to do a little bit of conversion from frequency to samples. Then the second inlet is your pulse width. And then the third one is onset phase, which we're not gonna use, so we can ignore this one. And then we're gonna have the second object, which will be your triangle. And let's check their inlets. So the first one expect the phase. And then the second inlet expects the duty cycle. Okay, so as you can see, we have two different objects which expects a different input. So let's grab param frec and we need to scale the output of that param to fit to those two inlets. So for train, it's kind of easy. It expects the frequency in samples. So what we need to do is to take the value from frec and then convert that into length in samples. So how do we do that? So first we need to convert the frequency to milliseconds. So what we need to do is inverse division of 1000 by the frequency. And that basically gives you the value of length in milliseconds. And then once you have the milliseconds, we have a little handy object called ms to sumps so we're going to call that up and patch those two and then now that is ready for the train so that's one oscillator done so let's move on to the triangle so for the triangle what it expect is the actual phase so what we need is to add a phaser object. And then plug the output of frec into phaser and then the phaser output to triangle. Okay, so far so good. So now I want to be able to mix those two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call up a mix object. And this is a little handy object that let you interpolate between the two signals. So let's place it underneath and stretch it so it lines up quite well to those two objects above. Okay, so it takes two signals, zero and one, and then the third input let you interplate, which means mix between those two signals. So before we plug this output of train into mix, we need to do a little bit of scaling since this train outputs the value between zero and one. So we need to convert that to minus one to one. Okay, so first of all, let's multiply the output by two. 
like so. And then that goes from zero to two. So we're going to subtract one. So it goes from minus one to one. So that's all nicely scaled. So that's all good there. So let's move everything down a bit because we'll be adding a few bits and bobs on the top of that. And the output of the triangle can plug into the mix straight away. So let's pull all these objects down a bit as well. So we have plenty of space on the top. OK, so let's start thinking about what sort of cool modulation that we can do to those two oscillators. So since we have pulse width input on the train and then the duty cycle input on the triangle, I think these two things can be bundled up and controlled by one param. So let's grab param C. And since both inputs expect the value between zero and one, which is quite handy. So before I connect the output of the param, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the min and max value of this param C to 0 0.1 and then to 0 0.9 for the max value. The reason why I'm doing this is purely because when you feed values like 0 and 1 to pulse width, you normally end up getting this really nasty, noisy sound because the edge of those cycle becomes so narrow that it becomes a bit unpleasant to your ears. So by limiting those min and max value, we can avoid those nasty situations. Before we connect the output of the param directly into those inlets, let's add a slide object. And what this slide does is it slews the input based on the value that you input. In this case, 2000 samples upwards and 2000 samples downwards. Okay, so let's connect the output of param goes into slide and then the output of the slide goes into the pulse width modulation and the duty cycle of those two oscillators. And let's move it around a little bit so we can utilize the space more efficiently, like so. Okay, so on the next step, I want to detune this triangle. So let's figure out how to do that. So doing this, it should be quite simple. So the first thing to do is to call the add object. And let's move it closer to phaser. So idea here is to be able to add or subtract the frequency to the original frequency so we can feed a different frequency to our triangle oscillator compared to the square oscillator. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another multiply object and grab the frequency out from the freq param and then put it into the right inlet of the add object. Then we're going to grab the param D and instead of plugging it directly, we're going to scale this. So original value is between zero and one, and then we want it to scale it to say minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. So let's plug the param out going to scale and then to the multiply object and basically what this is doing is it's either adding or subtracting about 10 percent of the original frequency regardless of the pitch so you can basically have the same detuning range regardless of how low or how high the frequencies are Okay, so let's add some comment to params that we added. So when we come back to this patch, we know what we are dealing with. These little tagging on comments always helps. Trust me, I've been back to my old patch and sometimes, you know, I have to like spend half an hour trying to figure out what I've done. So just a little comments always goes a long way. So 
that's all good and then i'm gonna do the mix with the our brand new param ac which will be controlled by midi cc 77 i think uh let me just go back and check so you see this is where this thing comes in handy so we're doing the ac which is yep yeah, that's cc 77 so i'm going to comment this um, square try mix cc 77 like so okay so i want this mix knob to mix the signal starting with the triangle and then adding more square because this way you know when you turn the knob anti-clockwise the sound will be softer and as you turn it clockwise you start to have more overtones so we need to invert this by doing the inverse subtract one so the value goes from one to zero instead of zero to one hence you will hear the triangle first and then the square mixed in and just to avoid any sort of glitches we're just going to add another slide so the transition will be smoothed out and let's just organize it and here we go so we now have a vco section with two oscillators with pwm and duty cycle modulation as well as detuning and the vco mix so yeah that looks like a pretty decent vco section to me so the last thing that we wanted to do is to have a portamento function so this can be done with the slide but instead of setting the value what we're going to do is let's just move this patch cable so this slide will reside before everything else and move things a little bit more like this and uh, pull this one down a little bit and then plug the param freck into the slide and what we want to do is to set another cc to control this slide value so let's grab param ad and add the comment so we know ad is now for the portamento and that's for the cc78 so yeah, let's make it capital so okay so now what we want to do is to scale this value so let's move it closer to the slide and what we want to do is since slide accepts length in samples what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by 1000 so that's 1000 millisecond and then add another ms to sumps so that converts the value between 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 second in samples so let's plug in so that's your slide up and then your slide down and let's organize it a little bit more like that okay i think we've done enough for one episode so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna name this as a vco section and wrap up this video so yeah well thanks for watching and yeah, keep tuning in because next episode we're going to cover the VCF and VCA on the down below. So yeah, as usual, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do and hit that like button if you like the video. It helps us a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and we'll try to answer it as soon as we can. So until next time, happy patching. See you soon. Bye.